Did you have an imaginary friend growing up? I know I sure did. In fact, they're here with me today. But if you had an imaginary friend, I assume they were just a funny little guy. Maybe there was something cute. Or maybe they were something cool. Now, wouldn't it be cool if that imaginary friend came to life? Well, today Disney's here to answer the question, what if your imaginary friend was real? And the answer to that question is uh, horrifying. Because your imaginary friend could look like this. And that's not even his most terrifying form. He gets so much worse. Hey guys, welcome back to the Toddy Boy channel. And today we are looking at the 1986 film Fuzz Bucket. Now this film was recommended to me by a friend. Uh, turns out she hasn't actually seen the film, she'd just seen the poster. Now this is the only poster of the film, and two of the people on it aren't actually in the film. Now instead of me giving a proper introduction, I thought we'd leave it up to our friend Michael Eisner, chairman of the Walt Disney Company. And it sounds like he's going to be joined by a couple of our little friends. So take it away, Michael. Good evening and welcome once again to the Disney Sunday movie. Mickey and I are here on stage four, in front of the treehouse that was used in tonight's movie, Fuzzbucket. It was in this very treehouse that a young boy and his invisible friend, Fuzzbucket, spent hour after hour talking and playing. We all know that invisible friends like Fuzzbucket really don't exist. I beg your pardon? Mickey, can you believe this? Fuzzbucket. Michael, I just can't tell you how long I wanted to meet the great Mickey Mouse. Nice to meet you, Fuzzbucket. It's my pleasure. I just loved your movie. You were terrific. Please, please, please. Makes a roll the film. Cheese you gotta start. I'd roll love to. As you can see, Mickey Mouse himself has personally endorsed this movie. He even took Fuzzbucket out for food. But Disney hasn't mentioned Fuzzbucket at all since the 80s. Have you seen Fuzzbucket walking around Disneyland? How come Little Mermaid gets a reboot and Fuzzbucket doesn't? Well, as you'll see over the course of the video, Fuzzbucket is, uh, a little problematic. Now, as we begin the film looking over this quaint suburban neighborhood, we see Michael Gerber in his treehouse talking to himself. But he's not talking to himself, he's talking to Fuzzbucket. So the conversation that Michael and Fuzzbucket are having here, it seems that they've just met each other. Now, there's a couple things you gotta know about Fuzzbucket. Fuzzbucket is completely invisible and also inaudible. Unless you are Michael, in which case you can hear him, but you still can't see him. Us, the audience, cannot hear him, but what we can hear are little musical riffs that kind of symbolize when he's talking. What kind of place do you live in? Well, how can you go back? Don't worry, we'll hear Fuzzbucket's actual voice later. For now, let's take Fuzzbucket's silence as a blessing. So the reason no one can hear Fuzzbucket except Michael is never explained in the film, but why he's invisible is explained. Apparently, if Fuzzbucket is away from home after midnight, he turns invisible. He seems to have a kind of gremlins type rule set going on here, but a lot more arbitrary. Instead of don't feed him after midnight, it's he's got to be home by midnight. So Michael is called from the treehouse by his mother. It's time for dinner. It's here we see some tensions are going on in the Gerber family. The sister calls Michael a tumor, which is just awful. The mother makes Michael eat mushrooms. Ew, gross, dude. They taste like lizards. Personally, I like mushrooms, but, you know, Maybe that's just me. I'm no and the father is always away at work. Man, Michael, your life really sucks, dude. That's sarcasm. I think his life is fine. I think it's a pretty good life. But there's just no pleasing Michael. Anyway, while he's at the table, uh, Fuzzbucket does something Fuzzbucket. to Michael. And Michael audibly tells him to go away. This is where the family becomes aware of Fuzzbucket. They believe that Fuzzbucket is an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for an imaginary friend? Us, the audience, know differently. The mother says Michael can't leave the table until he's finished his dinner. So naturally, he's there for hours. He then has a full one-sided conversation with Fuzzbucket complaining about his parents, saying how he wants to move out, while the mother is standing right there. This kid is just fully dissociating. The mother, however, chalks it up to him being nervous. It's his first day of junior high tomorrow. As an Australian, I don't know what junior high is. I think that's just starting high school, right? Year seven, as we'd call it, I think. Now, during the night, the father comes home. Now, poor Michael, the walls are paper thin, and he hears every word that his parents say. So to me, it just sounded like that they were complaining a bit about Michael. 
But for the rest of the film, they say that the parents had a big fight here. Some kind of imaginary friend. Oh, I thought there was an accident or something. I think it's serious. He keeps talking to something called a, um, a fuzz bucket. What? Do you think we spend enough time with him? I'm working long hours for those kids. Now, I've just shown you the clip. Was that an argument? It didn't feel like one. Maybe they just didn't want to show like a full argument in a movie for kids, which, you know, that's fair enough. Could trigger some things. Like, they didn't even have a disagreement in the clip, though. Like, give us a bit more. Give us more drama in Fuzzbucket, please. But yeah, apparently they were yelling at each other, so the kid goes and sleeps in the treehouse with Fuzzbucket. Okay, that's a little bit weird, but we're just gonna give that a pass for now. I wouldn't feel comfortable with my kid spending a night in a treehouse with Fuzzbucket, but I'm sure it's not gonna get any worse than this. I'm sure no more boundaries will be crossed here. Don't worry, Fuzzbucket. We can do it as soon as I get back from school. Do what, exactly? Well, stick around and find out what the kid and Fuzzbucket are gonna do after school. Now, Michael heads to school bringing Fuzzbucket with him. This is the most terrible idea I've ever heard of in my life. Hot tip, guys, if you're going to school, leave your imaginary friend at home. You are setting up being bullied for life here. It's all right, as long as Fuzzbucket keeps his hands to himself, I'm sure nothing bad could come out of this. Now, when Michael gets to school, he wasn't on the school list, so he's got to get taken to the office so they can work out where he's meant to be. Also in the office is an age-appropriate high school girl. Uh, let's just say he's kind of into her. Michael fixes his really cool haircut. What a sick haircut. I think anyone with that haircut is really cool. That's just a handsome... If you have that haircut, I'm sure any girl in the world would be into you. I think it's a sweet... Sweet, cool haircut, yeah. Anyway, Michael must be just radiating Riz, because this girl seems into him as well. Wow, things are really looking up here for Michael. Although Michael's home life is not looking very good, his school life is going to be excellent. I've got a good feeling about this. He's already in with the ladies. Nothing could go wrong. What the fuck, Fuzzbucket? It was in this moment that I almost turned off the film forever. The cringe was too much for me, but I persevered. So I guess Fuzzbucket just started tickling this kid. I'm really reading this situation as that Fuzzbucket was jealous of the attention that Michael was giving this girl and decided to ruin his chances with every woman forever. Cause like, this isn't gonna stay in this room. This girl is gonna tell every kid in the school about Michael and his weird laughing fit that he had. And like, him laughing is one thing, but also screaming out fuzz bucket stop it? Just try and play it off, man. Just try. Anyway, interrupting this laughing fit is, of course, the principal of the school. And he takes Michael into his office. That's right. Michael's in trouble for being weird. He starts to question him about what was so funny. Over the course of the conversation, it really seems that the principal is believing that Michael is having some kind of manic episode. And he relates this to the nerves of starting high school. He asks Michael on whether or not he's nervous about showering with the other boys in PE class. You nervous about PE? A lot of the young fellas are at first. They're not used to taking showers with the other guys. Some of the boys come in here with real bad stomach aches over that. But they get over it soon enough. That bother you at all? Like, that is such a weird thing for the movie to add. Like, out of everything that he could be stressed about, the principal jumps to the fact that it could be about boys showering together. That's a little weird, man. Like, that's... that's uncomfortable. And what's weirder is that this scene has no relevance on the rest of the film. Like, after this, Michael just goes home. While in the office, though, the kid still pleads with Fuzzbucket, please reveal yourself to the principal Fuzzbucket, and Fuzzbucket refuses to do so. Stop it. Tell him! Stop it right this minute. Tell him! Now, while Fuzzbucket is invisible, he's not intangible. He can still pick things up and move them. He chose just to ruin Michael's life for no reason here. Fuzzbucket willingly chose to look Michael, look crazy in front of the office staff, his fellow peer, and also the principal. Michael goes home and he makes a potion out of groceries and Fuzzbucket's mystery goo. Where'd this come from? Where this goo came from is never explained at all. We have to assume that Fuzzbucket just produces it somehow. I would not touch Fuzzbucket's mystery goo with a 10-foot pole. You couldn't pay me any amount of money to touch that. You couldn't pay me any amount of money to get within 50 feet of Fuzzbucket. 
Oh, actually, that looks pretty good. That looked like uh, slurp juice. Now the parents discover the mess and Michael is sent to time out in his room. No, no TV and, and no... no Fuzz bucket. However, Michael sneaks into the treehouse and he brings the potion with him. And as Fuzz Bucket drinks the chug jug, what occurs is the most horrifying reveal in cinema history. that the way to reveal this guy was to start from the inside out. Find me one person on the planet who wanted to see Fuzz Bucket's insides. We saw this man's skeleton before we saw his face. He's some kind of weird, terrifying rat possum creature. He looks like a scarier version of the Gobbledock. If I was this kid, I would have immediately just tossed this thing right out of the treehouse. Fuzz Bucket looks like if a rat and a quoll and a man had a baby. Fuzz Bucket looks like yeah, a wallaby with mange got drowned in pudding. Chunky, thank you! Oh, 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 what's he draw? Literally 50% of what this guy says, I have no idea what he's talking about. Fuzz Bucket in his joy proceeds to demand Michael dance. He's so demanding that he even pushes Michael over. Fuzz Bucket is becoming more problematic with every waking moment. He also does this weird purring thing all the time. That's creepy, man. That's so creepy. Fuzz Bucket needs to be in a horror film, not a kid's film. He says he comes from a place called Mushy Goo, which Whoa. Michael knows you as Dead, Dead Man's, Man's Marsh. Marsh. No friendly little character comes from Dead Man's Marsh. This should be an alarm bell, kid. So this place is meant to be so scary that even the parents don't go there. But now, thankfully, Fuzz Bucket's got to go home because he's been away from home for too long. And if it hits midnight, he's going to go poof forever, a.k.a. he's going to die. Now, Michael wants to go with Fuzz Bucket, but Fuzz Bucket assures him it's not a good boy place. It's a place only for Fuzz Buckets. Somehow, the two are best friends, but they've known each other for what? Not even 24 hours now. No, Fuzz Bucket, don't jump. You got so much to live for. I don't mean to hate on Fuzz Bucket so much, guys. He's just a little weird. He's just a bit of a weird character, okay? No hate on the people who made the film. Just what the hell were you thinking? Anyway, Fuzz Bucket takes off. Michael heads straight after him. Somehow, Michael immediately loses him. God, that's terrifying. They knew that Fuzz Bucket was creepy. They literally recreated the shot from it. While in pursuit, Michael's almost attacked by a homeless man, so Fuzz Bucket's fully just endangered this child. And then, moments later, he's proceeded to be jump scared by Fuzz Bucket. Ah! For some reason, Fuzz Bucket is now wearing clothes and is also being eaten alive by a rat. I assume the clothes is like a disguise, but. That's a really shit disguise, mate. Fuzz Bucket love you, but got to go. I want to go with you. Now, the parents have finally caught on that Michael is missing. Father promises that Michael's going to be home by that night. Dude's not only going out to save his son, he's also going out to save his marriage. Uh, spoilers, he doesn't find Michael that night. Also, the daughter's out knocking on the doors of her friends, asking about Michael there, and the mother's at home making phone calls. So the whole family's working together to find Michael. Meanwhile, Fuzz Bucket is just dancing through the middle of the street, jumping in puddles. What are you doing, mate? It's looking real late, and if you're not home after midnight, you're literally gonna die. Run, dude. If that was me, I would be sprinting. I would not be taking the time to dance in the freaking moonlight. I would be sprinting. Now, as Fuzz Bucket is dancing through the streets, having a ball, Michael is not so much. Michael wanders the entire night and the entire next day in the forest. The dude is completely losing it. He's so dramatic, man. You barely know this weird little creature. Let him go. Also, he can come and visit, all right? I love you. I love you is some strong words to say to a fuzz bucket. He's really lashing out here, losing faith in fuzz bucket. I wish that he lost faith in fuzz bucket before he left home. Could have saved everyone some time. Because when I say he could have saved everyone some time, the search parties are heading out. This movie is starting to feel 
really dark. They've got the police. They've got the dog squad. They've got the whole community. They're banding together to search the forest for a missing child. Meanwhile, Michael falls into a hole. He crawls around the holes for a couple minutes, and what does he find in there? Well, gosh darn, it's a whole community of fuzz buckets. That's the last thing I wanted to see. I thought one was bad enough, and now there's like a whole family of them. Hey, Mikey! How be doing, Polly boy? Mikey face? Oh. Fuzz Bucket is running out of nicknames fast. Mikey face. If this guy tried calling me Toddy face, there would be hell to pay. I'd drown that rat in mushy goo. Is that too much? I wanna be with you. Oh, funny boy. Okay, the dialogue choices in the film are really messed up. There was definitely a better way to phrase that. Like, that has to be deliberate, right? Is that just me? Do you guys agree with that? That that was weird and there's much better ways to phrase that. I want to be with you. Like, we save that for the ones we love. In a special way. I mean, this was the 80s. Maybe, maybe the lingo was different. I don't know. Tell me if it's weird. Fuzzbucket explains to the kid that the kid shouldn't live here. There's nothing for a kid. It's just dirt and roots. And then Fuzzbucket proceeds to explain that they're friends. The two needed each other. Fuzzbucket needed the kid to help him turn visible again. And then Fuzzbucket claims that he's helped this kid's home life. Mikey's house not so shabby now either. Mommy, daddy better now too. Now... I want to know, what the hell is Fuzzbucket talking about? Just as a quick breakdown, he's caused an argument between the parents, ostracized this kid from his family, ruined his chances at ever getting a girlfriend, led him through the city at night, not to mention to Dead Man's Marsh. That's a place where adults don't even go, and he lured a kid there. And he wasted police and community resources. Not to mention how uncomfortable his interactions with this kid have been. Is Fuzzbucket implying that he's brought the family closer together by kidnapping their child? Is Fuzzbucket the Joker of Woodland Critters? This dude is unstable. It's alright, we're getting to the end of the film. I'm sure he won't do anything weird from now on. You love Fuzzbucket? You smooch. What the fuck, Bucket, did this guy just say? Kid, you don't have to do that, man. You don't have to do that, man. Even the other Fuzz Buckets think that this interaction was weird. Fuzz Bucket is crossing a line. I love you too, Fuzz Bucket. Make me blush. Oh. Now, it's the end of the day and the search party is wrapping up. I'm glad we didn't find a kid out here. It's gonna be a dangerous place for a youngster. What are you talking about, dude? Uh, I think it would be better if you did find a kid out there and he was safe and sound. Anyway, miraculously, they find Michael asleep in a bush. Maybe Fuzz Bucket wasn't real after all. So they take the kid home and he falls asleep in bed. So the parents go into their room and then they find two presents. It's a Hershey's Kiss for Dad and a music box for Mum. Parents look at the presents and then they lovingly embrace. That cheeky fuzz bucket left them presents and saved the marriage. Yay! Oh, you did it, fuzz bucket. He really was trying to help out the family's home life. But surely it takes more than a couple cheap presents to save a marriage. And wouldn't the parents have some kind of discussion and realize that they had not given each other the presents? How did Fuzzbucket pay for these? He doesn't have money. He doesn't have pockets. He lives in a hole. Did you steal these, Fuzzbucket? Okay, so Fuzzbucket has committed theft, assault, grooming, break and enter, indecent exposure. Fuzzbucket, you're going to prison. Maybe that's why we haven't heard of Fuzzbucket in such a long time. Dude's rotting away in prison. I give this film... 10 marriage saving Hershey's kisses out of 10 marriage saving Hershey's kisses. And I say, let's bring back Fuzz Bucket. Maybe not in a film around kids. I'm sure he'd fit into Star Wars or, or Avengers somewhere. Maybe if they do another live action Beauty and the Beast, he can take over the role of the Beast. All I say is, thank God that this movie is fake and that Fuzz Bucket isn't real. Oh my God. He's right behind me, isn't he?